Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and I'm here with a reaction to Nintendo's Direct that was at E3, and their whole presentation it was very well done. Um, you know, E3, I, I don't even know why they have this anymore. I don't know, something, even though it's open to the public now, it feels even more commercial than it first did, you know, when it was just, like, open to just the companies themselves and to the press. I don't know. It just E3 just kind of feels depressing. There's not a lot of innovation. Like, let's be honest here. Like, um, there's not really a whole lot coming out for, you know, PlayStation and the Xbox. You know, there's all talk about the future, but I don't know. Like, very disappointing on that front. But thank God Nintendo is here with tremendous support for the Switch. I mean, I have to say, like... This is one of the most exciting times I have seen for a system. This is probably the best I've seen Nintendo since the Super Nintendo. I mean, they've just got games coming out the wazoo. And people can make all the arguments and the excuses they want about, you know, their decisions with, say, you know, uh, Mario Maker, you know, to not have, like, a fully committed you know, server and, and, and just, you know, have this like open-ended online system. And I'm just like laughing at these people who are overly, I'm not saying that, you know, the criticism, the criticisms are not justified, but like they're knocking a company saying they're making all the wrong decisions. They must be doing something right because they're dominating in the sales right now. It's, this is a, a console that's like beat out the PS4 in Japan. I mean, they're, they're doing a lot of things right here. Um, they're beating out a lot of lifetime sales here. They, they've even surpassed their own consoles. Even consoles from years ago, they're even surpassing. So they're definitely doing something right when it comes to their strategy and their marketing. So I'm here to talk, not to talk about that. You know, I, I think, should they have E3? No, there's really no purpose with YouTube and the internet. And everyone pretty much knows most of the stuff before it even happens through leaks and stuff. But, you know, Nintendo's had a lot of success with Direct. You know, you take a look at the YouTube videos. They get millions of views. They People know Direct when they hear Nintendo Direct. They know what it is. They watch it. And, you know, now it's kind of just like a whole video presentation anyway. You know, they're going to make a 45-minute video. What is the purpose of even having E3? You might as well just sit at home and watch it. I get it, the environment and everything, but I don't know. Save you the trip. But let's talk about a few of these games. Some of them I've already talked about in previous videos. So let's talk about, like, some of the smaller ones, and I'll build my way up. So, um... There's Dragon's Quest 12. So, um, I'll say like Astral Chain is like one game that a lot of people have been talking about. It's like a Japanese anime style game, I think with some RPG action elements. It looks pretty cool. I'm not sure if that's going to be like one of the top things on my list to buy. But it's definitely a game that I would consider. I, I don't, you know, there's a lot of games that I've overlooked throughout the years and I've went back. Uh, you know, as the years went on, I've regretted not coming to these games sooner. So I don't want to repeat that mistake. But so, you know, Astral Chain looks okay. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about it, though. Uh, I just have to kind of see how it is. Anyway, Dragon's Quest XI. So this is a game that obviously people have already played on the PlayStation 4. Um, but I, I, I always was fascinated by Dragon's Quest because I, I believe... Um, like the original games were drawn up by Akiri Toriyama. I, I mean, I don't know anything that has like a Dragon Ball look to it. I'm immediately going to be attracted to it. And I, I talked about that back in the direct that was all the way back in February saying I was fascinated. This is definitely going to be the game that gets me into the Dragon Quest franchise because it looks amazing. The graphics look great. It looks like a lot of fun. It looks like there's a lot of interesting towns to meet and i just i've heard a very i don't know it's dragon's quest is like one of those games where it's popular but it's like nowhere near final fantasy heights but it, people who do play dragon quest the series you know any of the games out of it i'm sure there's games that are better than others they seem to have a pretty positive reaction many fans really like the series so i think this would be a series that i would probably enjoy 
if I played it. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Collection of Mana. I, I just can't believe that, um, that, that this is actually happening. You know, Secret of, uh, of Mana was, uh, you know, or mana. Uh, I never know how to say it, but Secret of Mana. I think that's actually how I say it most of the time. I don't know why I say mana, but Secret of Mana, anyway, uh, was a game that I first experienced on the uh, the Super Nintendo Classic. Uh, and it was a game that I overlooked. It was a game I remember seeing the box for in Toys R Us. And RPGs just didn't fascinate me. I said for many years, like the only traditional RPG game I played was Super Mario RPG. If you want to count like the Zelda games, which have RPG elements, but are no by no means like we're talking about like JRPGs, Final Fantasy, and the like. So I really like Secret of Man. I'll be reviewing that game here soon on the channel. Um, I have all the footage for it and everything. I just need to. Uh, and I have the commentary, right? I just have to put that together. Uh, but they're going to have now a package uh, together. And, you know, I don't know. The, the package kind of seems there's more games. There was more games for the PlayStation um, in this series. So I don't know why they're just doing three games. They're going to give you Final Fantasy Adventure, which I never knew was a, was a mana game. Uh, I never knew that that was part of the secret of Ma well, the just the Mana series. Um, I always refer to it as like the secret of Mana series, but Secret of Mana is just the uh, the first Super Nintendo game. So that's actually part of it. It's really it's part of the Final Fantasy lore. It's not really its own thing. It's an offshoot. It's kind of weird. I don't even really understand it. Uh, so you, you could actually say that I've played a game and enjoyed a game that I don't fully understand, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, but a anyway, they've included those two games. So one for Game Boy, the one that everyone knows for the Super Nintendo, and another game that I, I've been keeping my eye on this um, was a uh, the Super Nintendo game that was never released in the States, the sequel for the Super Nintendo, which is actually the third game in the series. This is um, bizarre to say the least. That uh, this is what I'm actually like really finding humorous here is that Secret of Mana has got a collection, and they're releasing the third game in the series that people in the states have never had an official copy of. You know, you've had to import it, you've had to like play it um through emulators and shit like that or played on on reproduction carts or something like that like translated so the thing is what's funny to me is that before mother 3 the the, the sequel to earthbound ever gets released officially in the states that secret of mana did so i mean i don't know uh to me i rather have had mother 3 um because like I just I don't know I uh, I I I never I don't know like I want to like wait but I'll be waiting a long time to be playing that game officially because it might never happen you know it could be like 2030 and then all of a sudden the Nintendo Direct comes out saying that they're gonna have a Mother Three official release um, and I mean, people will probably take it in stride as well when it finally does happen. But I just found that kind of humorous. So I'm really looking forward to playing both those games. Um, I believe Final Fantasy Adventure is pretty cheap for Game Boy. Um, but it's nice to have them all in one collection. And they're doing a limited run for this game, which I don't get the limited run thing. That's usually for like indie games and stuff like that but they're doing that with secret of uh, mana I, I don't know but I, anyway i will pre-order that because i really do want to play that third game and, and and you know like i don't know what it is some people are fine playing on repros i feel really good about i, I don't know it's like with a lot of people who like authentic stuff i i, I like like knowing that like this is nintendo wants us to have this so i get more enjoyment out of playing it i, I don't know call me a sick puppy but i enjoy that in my mind it helps my enjoyment of the game this is an official release something that we're getting to experience it and it feels you know, it feels like more authentic to me and then they tell us we're going to get trials of mana 
So now, not only are we going to get secret, uh, not only are we going to get a, a mana collection, or, uh, and we're going to get the third game in the series that has never been officially released in the series, we're going to get a remake of the third game. I almost thought that this was an original game. And I don't know, I just think it's strange. It's like, we're so far behind in the States in this game series. It's like, they've had all these games, and I don't know if they were official. I think there was like one game for the PlayStation that was officially released. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but um, there has been many Circuit of Mana games for like many different systems, and we haven't like even seen half of them. So I don't know like where those games are on the collection. I know it's not an issue of them being able to fit it. I mean, two Super Nintendo games, and 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 one uh, Final Fantasy game. I I I mean, one uh, Game Boy game, Final Fantasy Adventure. Like they couldn't figure out how to put more games on there. I don't know if there was like licensing issues. I mean, weren't they all made by Square? Uh, I would have I would have thought that they were. Um, but that's pretty cool that the Mana series is making a comeback. It's just weird to me that there's, like, no new games being announced for the States. Like, if if there's so much demand for these games, why isn't there, like, a new one released? I, I get it's a remake and everything. Uh, maybe if these do well, maybe they'll start, like, releasing them regularly in the States, I, I guess. Secret of Mana is pretty popular. It's a game that a lot of people talk about here on YouTube. I'm... I'm not really too sure how it sold back in the day. I think it did okay. It definitely earned its way onto the Super Nintendo Classic. But then again, Earthbound did, and that didn't sell well at all. So, I don't know. It's It, it definitely has more than a cult following, but it kind of has that feeling to it. I don't know, but it's, it's a popular game that a lot of people talk about. And in retrospect, it's... It's, you know, it's very popular when people look back on it on the Super Nintendo. So good that it's finally getting a lot of attention. Luigi's Mansion 3. Now, I've played the first game in the series. I, you know, I, I actually never completed it because the last boss to me was, like, impossible. And I remember I got frustrated after, like, trying 20 times. And, and I, I don't know, I just never went back to it. It, it frustrated me pretty badly, I remember. And that's kind of strange because I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm more patient with games now. And I feel like if I come back to it the next day, I usually find that things are like easy. I usually just kind of get burnt out because I've been playing the game for a while. But I've never played 2, which was on the, um, the 3DS. Uh, so now they're doing the third game. And that's always weird to me. Like when there's a console game... Then there's a handheld game. And now we're back to having a console well, slash handheld game. So 3 looks pretty good. Good graphics. Um, people are probably excited about all the co-op. Um, I uh, I couldn't really, you know, um, I couldn't care less about that. Um, but anyway, you know, I'm a single player kind of guy. Uh, but... It looks really good, and the slam function, like, when you catch the ghosts, that looks so satisfying. Like, I can't wait to, like, see how that feels playing the game. But I saw that slam, and I'm like, damn, that looks, like, fun. Like, you know, sucking up the ghosts in the original game was fun, albeit a little frustrating, I remember, because sometimes the ghosts would escape through the walls, and then you'd have to start from scratch. And I remember, like, in certain, like, narrow corridors, I was like... This game mechanic is cool, it's fun, it's Ghostbuster-ish. And that's what I like about the game, because it's like two things that I really like, like Ghostbusters and the Super Mario Bros. universe. But uh, I remember, like, sometimes the environments don't really complement the gameplay so well. So, uh, I, I don't know, I was looking, it seems like the environments seem a bit more wide open but then again we just saw some gameplay from it so i, I don't know uh if they're leaving those parts out we have to kind of see how the whole map plays out uh there's a game called crypt uh crypt of the necro dancer it's an indie game but they're putting in which was or like originally very Le legend of zelda ish and i don't know why i didn't know about this game um it, it it's kind of like me like discovering like a few months ago the um uh wonder boy series and like as you could see like uh you know <laughs> uh 
Uh, I've totally got into that series. And, um, but it's not really indie game. Uh, it was, I think it was remade by an indie developer, but anyway, well, spiritual successor and all that nonsense. But, uh, you know, like I said, there's games that are amazing that I have like passed up on and I'm not going to do that again. And now they're, they're doing a Zelda add on with Zelda sprites and Zelda enemies. It's called Cadence of Hyrule. It's like a little like add on and I'll definitely be playing that. Probably want to play the original too. Don't know if that's available in the physical copy. I'll have to check it out. But it, it definitely seems like it's worth my time. Um, it's also a creepy name. Like Necro Dancer. I don't know. I have to check that out. It seems cool. Anything Zelda related has definitely got my attention. Link's Awakening. I saw the gameplay here. It looks incredible. It's like a spot on uh, remake. With a little things like thrown in. I saw they had um, a Dampy think that's how you say his name from ocarina time the grave digger so they threw him in there that was pretty cool something with like hearts like a little mini game i don't know but there's probably going to be little surprises thrown in here and there um and you know i didn't watch the whole thing i skimmed through it i was excited to make this video so i was like i'm gonna go back and watch more of it later but it looked incredible i literally got chills at the end of it when um when link walks up to the um to the windfish egg uh, and you know, and the ballad of the windfish plays. Oh my god, I cannot wait to listen to that soundtrack like remastered with orchestral instruments. It's going to be incredible. For people who don't know already, I've already said in, in the past, Link's Awakening is my favorite Zelda game of all time. If you have not played the original, I have to stress this get the game. I would recommend that, you know, if you have a Super Nintendo, that you get yourself a Super Game Boy and play it on there. Or at the very least, if you have a 3DS, buy it off the eShop. It is just, there's something about that game that it, it just, it hit in all the right spots. It's an incredible experience. Um, and it was the first Zelda game that I completed. Um, and it was definitely quite the experience looking back on it. Definitely out of the whole direct, it was, and just, I knew going into it, like, <laughs> there's no way you could, like, remake one of my favorite games of all time, and, and it's not going to be the most exciting thing. I was like, I couldn't believe that they're actually remaking this. Um, hopefully they remake Zelda 2. It would be pretty awesome to see them remake all um, well, they've already technically done sort of a Link to the Past remake, um, but that was more like kind of like a, a, a sequel. Zelda 2, the original Zelda would be awesome, but yeah, Link's Awakening, I'm so happy that they picked that one. Um, Banjo, Banjo-Kazooie and Smash. Um, look, guys, like, I, I, like, haven't bought Smash Ultimate because, I don't know, like, I've never been too big on Smash. It's a little bit, for, for me anyway, I feel like overrated. It's just certain fighting games I get tired of after a while. And there's been so many Smash games. I remember I, I, the last one that I purchased was on the Wii, which was Brawl. And I remember like, you know, after a few hours of playing it, it's cool, it's awesome having Nintendo characters face each other. And now we're getting like other characters that are not necessarily Nintendo characters. I mean, there's Ryu from Street Fighter, there's um, Snake from Metal Gear Solid, you know, you know, there's Mega Man, like all these other franchises. It's, it's awesome, it's incredible. I will probably get the game one day, but I, I don't know, it's just like, I, I just, I was surprised that no one else said this. It's really cool that we're getting anything Banjo Kazooie, but like, why are we like not getting a new Banjo Kazooie game? Like, okay, if Nintendo now like, because I, I don't know what it is. Microsoft owns Rare, so I don't know what they're doing with that property. I never understood that. You, you know, I I, I don't know, I guess because nuts and bolts didn't do so well, but they they shouldn't have been surprised by that when they completely changed the whole formula and they remade Banjo and and Kazooie to look like total shit. So like I don't I don't get like why it was like oh we we have to stop the whole thing now. No, there could be no more Banjo Kazooie games because we totally fucked this up. Um, so I don't I don't get that at all. Like uh, where. 
are the new uh, Banjo Kazooie games. Like, like honestly, the last one that came out was in 2008. So we're just gonna go like 11 years with like no Banjo Kazooie game. Anyway, it's like it's cool. They look good. The classic design is there. It was really exciting to see them in direct. It was, um, it, you know, it, it was really cool. And I'm a big fan of that game series. And I was happy to see it. But it's just like, I was like, this is cool. But I, I mean, I, I know it sounds greedy. Like I said, anything with Banjo Kazooie, we should be happy about. But I was just like, where's the new Banjo game? I mean, maybe this is a good sign. I, I hope that. You know, whoever owns this property now sees the all the excitement that of how people were pulling for Banjo to be in Smash. But I was like, why are so many people so concerned about him being in Smash when we should just be pulling for him to have a new game, period? I, I don't get that. And to top it all off, the best way to end this video would be to talk about uh, the Breath of the Wild sequel, which is, doesn't have an official name yet. Uh... You know, it, it 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 looks like um, you know it's going to be the same exact art style. It's going to be the same high rule. Um, you know, as you could tell from my review, I really liked Breath of the Wild. I thought it was a great game, but there were certain things about it that I didn't really care for. One being kind of the art direction. I liked it. I had a love-hate relationship with it. But it also looked a little too washed out. It had this weird like shells, uh, cell shaded look to it. But it wasn't fully committed to it. It tried to like have both the, the darkness of Twilight Princess. And it didn't feel as bright and colorful. It looked more dirty and grimy. And I didn't really like that look as much. But then that kind of makes me a little hypocritical because Twilight Princess was dirty and grimy as well. But I didn't like that it tried to have, like, look like a dark Wind Waker. I was like, I didn't think those two styles really meshed too well. Uh, and it didn't really look too great, uh, I, like, to me at, at all times. Certain times, like I said, when you climbed up and you saw all the scenery, high rule is great. But I just hope that they kind of, like, just, like, I, I would say... You could have the shrines and everything. You could keep those because they're fun. But do not do anything like the Divine Beasts. If you're going to do this game, fine. Let it be a sequel. But there's no reason. Now we've like advanced in the series. Make it like years later. Maybe they, they come upon a new section of Hyrule. Even though it kind of looked like it was the same portion of Hyrule we previously. But you know that it's not going to be the same exact area. I hope not. Um, but... Put dungeons in it. Please put dungeons in there. And like, I'd say like, do a lot of them. Make it like Ocarina of Time. Don't make them like extremely long and tedious. Seriously, because like, I'm not saying that like all the puzzles in those Divine Beast dungeons were bad. But please, for the love of God, just decorate them. Make them look original. Instead of having like, you know these different mechanics make like i said forest temple the great bay temple all these different examples the i can't think one off the top of my head with in the twi in twilight princess and the wind waker dungeons just like all these different concepts do dungeons like that do them the way you used to do them because i did not like that really at all I thought that that was the greatest flaw. It was very hard for me to say that the game did a lot of wrong because it did a lot of good and it had a lot of interesting ideas and it dared to be different than the rest of the series. But it was a, you know, the only portion of the argument of people saying that it is a bad Zelda game, I would agree with them when it comes to the dungeons. I did not like the Divine uh, Beasts offshoot of dungeons. And so hopefully they go back to that. I'm sure, you know, Nintendo's pretty good with listening to fans. I mean, you know, fuck, they get put Banjo-Kazooie in Smash. So now let's take something that's probably even more popular and, you know, listen to the fans here. And let's put typical uh, dungeons. You know, you can make them atypical if you want, um, but, you know, still keep the same, you know, classic feeling. 
I, I think like, okay, now, you know, you branched out, you saw what works and doesn't work. Now bring it full circle and, you know, give us what we want. And, and that's, you know, Breath of the Wild, I'm fine with them making a sequel to it. I kind of wish that they would have something a little different. I've never really seen... Oh, I mean, I guess you could say Ocarina of Time leading into Majora's Mask. But, you know, usually, like, every single generation they, they of Zelda, they make it feel, like, different. So I'm kind of, like, amazed that they're, like, actually trying to, like, sell this as a sequel. Um, that, that And they actually said, like, sequel. Like, even when Majora's Mask came out they didn't even they didn't like just clearly say oh it's a sequel to ocarina of time they were like well there's similar features and it comes after but they didn't really say like oh it's a se here it's like it's a sequel so that that kind of worries me that some of the same flaws will be in it because not everybody thought they were flaws uh but i'm just saying i will be disappointed if they don't correct some of the things that i didn't like in those games and if you, if you want to know what i liked and didn't like in uh breath of the wild go watch my review on it i'm pretty proud of it. it's a pretty good lengthy 20 minute review i think you'll enjoy it there you go guys there's my thoughts uh you know what did the other companies really have besides nintendo not a whole lot it was really a boring e3 outside of nintendo there's like no talk of it like i go on instagram like, everyone was talking about Nintendo. I didn't see anyone talking about Microsoft or Sony. Like, they had, like, some things, but, like, there was no real talk. Um, so, anyway, guys, uh, I'm looking forward to these games. And some of the other ones looked okay on there, too. Um, but, yeah, th that's it for now, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell so you get all the notifications when I post all my new videos. And guys, I'll see you next time.